Hey guys, Adam here with another computer video. Um, this is my laptop. I've had it for a while. I actually used to have a MacBook Pro. I think it was like the 14-inch one. Uh, it was uh, the, basically the same machine as this one, um, except it was a lot more expensive. So th those were actually still worth a decent amount when I sold it. Um, I ended up selling it last summer for almost $700. And then I bought this recently for like a hundred and thirty dollars so uh, I, I basically used boot camp all the time I can't stand Mac OS at all so uh, you know this thing uh, as far as I'm concerned is actually better because uh, it actually has better battery life than the uh, MacBook did it's not quite as pretty or thin but there's a couple upgrades that I want to do to it to make it more usable um, I picked this memory up this is eight gigabytes of uh, crucial memory and then I also have this uh, Samsung Evo 840 SSD drive. I'm going to keep the hard drive that's in it. It's a 250 gigabyte hard drive but I think it's only a 5400 RPM drive. I'm actually going to use that as my uh, drive for uh, I'm going to buy one of those uh, ex the, the bay converters that converts this removable DVD drive into a uh, any place for a hard drive to go. It's like a little caddy that goes in there. I'm actually going to get, uh, I have one of those on order, so when that comes, I'm going to put that drive in here. I don't use the optical drive anyway, so. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this stuff done today, and that means we got to pull the battery. Probably don't actually have to pull the battery to do this, but I'm going to, and my Windows key's there, so I'm going to cover that up. We'll get out this uh, taken out and get to work. All right, so the basic idea is I'm going to do the memory upgrade first just so I make sure I'm not doing too many changes at once. I believe this one screw here is all that needs to be removed and this bottom cover should slide off. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out. I think there's probably supposed to be screws in here that secure the hard drive, uh, but those evidently were removed by whoever refurbished this. But just like that we have access to everything in here. So there's the optical drive bay. This is the wireless card, of course. The CPU is under there. There's a nice copper, uh, tube, uh, copper cooler here. Uh, the Ethernet port on this machine does not work correctly. It it just when you plug in a cord, nothing happens. I kind of suspect somebody may have plugged in a phone cord or something to it, because that will happen if you plug that in. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this old memory out of here. So it came with four gigs, and we're going to go ahead and put in eight. Uh, memory was never really a huge issue. I just figured memory is cheap enough that it uh, doesn't really hurt anything to upgrade that. I'm probably going to end up putting Windows 8 on this as well, because I generally put Windows 8 on everything now, because it, especially something like this, uh, it boots a lot faster and stuff. So I have a key for Windows 8. I think I'm going to use that on this machine. So I'm going to get the memory out of it. It's impossible to open package here and uh, go ahead and put it in. Alright, actually that package was mercifully easy to open. So uh go ahead and take out a new RAM. Now so dims are easy to not really install correctly. You have to push them down pretty good and then snap them into place. So uh just make sure that it looks like it's actually in the memory slot all the way. See like it's easy to put it in kind of like half cocked like that. I don't know if you can see the pins there, but uh it's easy to do that, so you just want to make sure that it's seated correctly and give it a good push. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this thing up. It should work now with this memory. Assuming it does, we'll go ahead and pull the drive out and do that swap. All right, so we'll try to get into the BIOS here and see if uh, it is indeed functional. Looks like the screen there it goes. What is the F2 on this? What is it? Okay, we got into the the BIOS here. So it's recognizing the 8 gigs of RAM. Everything should be good there. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this is an e, uh, a Dell Latitude E6410. Uh, it's kind of old. It has like, a, I think that's a first generation i5 in it and all that. But uh, I just use this for basically some kind of light work and stuff. So uh, it should be all right for, you know, the next couple of years, I would think, for the kind of use I've been doing with it, my school work and stuff. So I'm going to shut this down. Um, Actually, let's just do that right now. Shut her down. Like I said, somebody had uh, 
evidently not thought it was important to put the screws back in for the, uh, the hard drive caddy here, so just pops right out. So this is our hard drive. It's a Western Digital, which is always good to see. So it's just held in probably, does it even have screws holding it into this caddy? Yeah, it has like one screw perhaps, like I think maybe just this one screw. So I need two hands to do this. Go ahead and swap over the other drive. And well, here's our SSD swapped over. And it should, assuming I remembered which way it came out, just kind of pop in there. Now that's really loosey goosey now. So I'm definitely gonna have to find the screws. Now, I think the extra thickness of this drive helped hold it in, but now that that's not there, this thing's just kind of flopping around in the wind here. So I hope it's actually lining. I don't know if it's even lining up with the. I don't even know if it's actually lining up correctly. That could be an issue. Hmm. How does that port work in there? It feels like super loose. Like it might just be going over the top of that SATA port. I don't know if I can get enough light in there. So the SATA port's kind of up high. Hmm, I'm gonna have to compare these two drives next to each other, see how they'd sit. Well, I went through my uh, bags of screws and I found some regular fine threaded case screws that you'd use like in an actual computer case and uh, they fit because the screws are going into the drive they're not actually going into like the caddy they go into the bottom holes on the drive which is kinda nice because it means that um, it means that it will work with pretty much anything so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can get into the, the BIOS again I don't remember if it's F2 or if it's uh, delete so I'm just mashing away here all right we got in cool so it's recognizing the uh, 120 gigabyte drive is a hard drive so that's good where is I hope I'm hoping that this has um, age there it is HCI mode enable that uh, yeah, that's totally cool. Apply that change. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead with the uh, Windows 8 installation from this USB stick. And uh, everything should be good. I'll be back. All right, so the Windows setup is progressing. Uh, the machine should be good for a couple, probably like at least two years more use, I would think, with this upgrade done to it. Um, kind of reached a point with computers where you kind of really don't need to buy them as often. It's not like in the late 2000, you know, the early 2000s, late 90s, where they were like constantly changing every year. Um, things have kind of settled down. Seems like since, since really the end of Windows XP, like the beginning of the Vista era, um, they're, you know, they're more powerful, but unless you're doing video rendering or some sort of complicated stuff like that, for the most part, you can get everything done as far as daily activities, uh, pretty much anything, especially because Windows 8 seems like it's a lot more efficient with uh, use of system resources. So anyway, we'll wrap up this installation. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.